Okay, let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give this morning to you. We give this message to you. We just ask, Father, that you let land what you need to let land. Father, we just want to honor you. And Holy Spirit, we invite you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to start by saying that my only thought when I agreed to share a message was to give Dave the day off. It's the only thing I thought about when Lois asked me. Uh, so, what I thought I would do is, um, I got a picture. So what I thought I would do is use the next 20 minutes to take you through all of the 937 photos of my trip to Italy <laughs> from October. No, not really, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's Mary and I in Florence. So, anyways, I'm going to start by reading Psalms 32, verses 1 to 12. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I'll confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with, the loving eye, with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the ones who trust in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all who are upright in heart. Once I committed to doing this message, um, obviously fear and self-doubt flooded. What am I going to share? I had several weeks to let things percolate. And Dave had sent me the Lent series that he's using and that helped bring shape to this message. So many of the scriptures that I'm using today are from um, the Lent. Verses, I just want to highlight verses 5 and 6 from Psalms 32. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover, uh, cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. And I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you, Lord, forgave the guilt of my sin. That speaks of a rich heritage our heritage and talk about heritage. I know Jason and Donna aren't here today, but they would know this very well. When, uh, or I'll just say, did you know that Italian women dress to stop traffic, even when they're going to market or out for a cappuccino? It got to the point where Mary and I in Italy, we would be walking down the street and a woman would walk by dressed like you've never seen and we would just stop. So 14 days, whenever we saw a woman dressed like that, we would stop and I'd go, and we'd go. <laughs> we would just stop and applause. They have a rich heritage over there. But this is our heritage. This is where we live. The majority of, of us here were born and raised hearing about Jesus and knowing the Bible stories. As part of our stories, many of us can say we have seen God work. We have experienced him personally. This is a rich and meaningful heritage. We have been taught that God knows us and he loves us and he's jealous for us. Psalms 139 says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. 
We have the almighty God, the creator of the universe, living and dwelling in us. This is our heritage. I was shaped into a believer, into a follower of Christ. In this day and age, this is a unique experience and perspective. And not only that, but after decades of listening to messages and sermons and going to conferences and Bible studies and book studies, we all must recognize and admit that if push came to shove, we all have a message to share. We are mature sons and daughters. We are settled in our faith and in our choice to follow Jesus. We are the elders of the church. We have the most training. We have the most influential positions. Friends, we have become our parents. <laughs> belonging. The definition of belonging is a feeling of being happy and comfortable as part of a particular group and having a good relationship with the other members of the group because they're welcome and accepted by you. Did you know that a sense of belonging is one of humanity's most basic needs? Can you remember a time when you had the feeling of belonging? Or even more, I bet you all can remember a time when you didn't feel belong, like you belonged and you were hurt and you felt left out. I can remember I was six or seven years old, maybe eight, and teams were being picked at my public school for a pickup baseball game. And if anybody knows me, I love sports. Um, and I was short, even shorter than I am now. <laughs> and I remember the first time being in the group of kids and teams were being picked and that gut rolling feeling when a name was called and it wasn't yours and another name was called and it wasn't yours and another name was called and it wasn't yours and I was the last one picked and it felt awful. It felt horrible and I probably was only picked because the nice thing to do was everybody got to be on a team. That feeling of being passed over stays with us. And then when we do get to be in a group like this where we feel like we belong, it's a blessing. A few years ago, a transformation began to happen in me that has led me to understand the love of God in a whole new way. I can't really tell you how I got here. But over time, as I welcomed people I normally would have avoided, I began to see the value in these people. Different from me, yes, but they were generous and kind, and they welcomed me as well. I love the church because I do experience belonging here, but it saddens me that there is a majority of people who don't, do not feel welcomed and accepted here. My mother's heart breaks when I'm told how my biases and judgments have made my children feel unworthy and unloved by God. And they feel very much an outsider. Their heartbreak and brokenness has been imprinted on my heart. How can I, one who knows the value of belonging, not open my arms to everyone and give them a space in my life? What informs the judgment that grows in me when I look at the way someone dresses, the food they eat, the prayers they pray? What is the source of my evaluation of someone, someone's living situation or recreation? Why have I let the behavior and choices of others lead me to rejection or exclusion from God's love? Truly, it isn't scripture. In scripture, Jesus constantly models to us his love and attention to those cast out, judged, and rejected by society. Settled in my faith, drawing on my rich heritage, I love. This has been a revolutionary idea for me, and it's established itself in my core. I am to love. Faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love, says 1 Corinthians. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, Mark 12. In Luke 15, we find three parables, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. Let me read a bit from the, that, um, that chapter. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. 
starting at verse three. Then Jesus told them in this parable, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and his neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in that same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven when one sinner who repents over the 99 righteous persons who do not repent. Verse three specifically says, he is going to leave us. He's going to leave the 99. He's going to leave those that are already established in faith. He is ready to leave and go and find the one. What if we live wholeheartedly, settled in the power and knowledge of Jesus Christ? What then if we let people live the life they choose without judgment, allowing them the free will that God fought so hard for? How, truly, how do their choices affect my life? Can we choose differently than the older brother in Luke 15? The older brother worked day in and day out beside the father to build his kingdom. Because we have chosen to stay, because we've chosen a life of purity, because we've chosen a life of blamelessness, do we defend the kingdom by shutting out the broken, the lost, and the wounded? Are we so spoiled by our heritage that we won't share it with the lost? What if we give them the access to the Father? Don't we boast that we are the hands and feet of Jesus? Could it be us, his children, his bride, his church, with our hands extended in judgment that our rules and our rules that withholds the goodness of God from them. Luke 15 says three times that he's going to leave and find the lost. He's going to leave and find the lost sheep. He's going to leave and find the lost coin. He's going to leave and run down the road to welcome his son. I do not have to feel threatened. We do not have to feel threatened in any way by someone who lives or thinks differently than we do. Let's hear their stories. Let them enrich our lives. Friends, everyone has the right to belong. We must give those who otherwise might be excluded or marginalized equal access to his opportunities of freedom and forgiveness. Allow them to access his grace and his mercy. Can we include them within our lives? Let's not pass judgment based on good and evil, but let's continually eat from the tree of life. Paul says, though I am free, I belong to no one. I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I'm not free from God's will, but I'm under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I became all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Can we agree to come together in curiosity, without judgment, to listen to each other? Belonging provides a respectful place where people feel accepted to share their opinions and, and thoughts. Everyone's perspective is valued. Let's be gentle with each other. Only God can see into the heart of man. Those people might be walking with God. It just looks different than my walk. In the Lent series, at the very end, they suggested that you hold up an apple. And this represents, for me, this represents my, my fellow people, my people around me and in my life, in my workplace. And from the outside, there's a little blemish here, but you know, there may be a little bit of bruising here. That's all I can see. But when you cut it open, you can see that deep inside, there are seeds. 
that God has planted. And I believe he is working in people's lives. And I do believe that they may be walking, they are walking with God. It just looks different than my walk with God. This is a journey that I'm on. And I welcome anyone who wants to come along with me. It's uh, something that, honestly, I, I am amazed. I was shaped by my upbringing, and that shaping is such a rich heritage for me and my children. But I also understand that there has to, been, has to have happened some deconstruction and reconstruction so that I can actually move with what God is asking me to go. Thank you.